Whoa, whoa, WrestleMania 39 started slow. Uh oh, uh oh. But Zane Owens, Usos, Rhea and Charlotte said, We're gonna take this show and pick it up, pick it up. Whoa, whoa, WrestleMania ended in great fashion with two new champs, new champs. Whoa, whoa, WrestleMania. 39 night one. Let's go. Let's go. I'm John Renton with my review. WWE WrestleMania 39 night one. WrestleMania goes Hollywood and then again tomorrow and again in probably 10 more years. Okay. <clears throat> gonna say right now that there's gonna be some praise, some scorn, but I want to know what you guys have to say about this show in the comments, please. There were some great moments. There were some moments that made me think, whoo hoo, boy, goodness me. Also, in regards to the stand and deliver review. I want to say right now before I dive into this, I will have that review up at some point. I had to work late because I usually do on Saturday and I wasn't able to watch the show live. I was able to watch some of it during the pre-show because once I saw Stephen A. Smith and Johnny Knoxville on the second hour of the pre-show, I said no. And I said about Johnny Knoxville, the CTE ridden fuckwit. Look, I don't think he's a bad guy. I just think jackass is one of the dumbest things that has ever been invented. And all those guys that have all those injuries and all that stuff or whatever. And uh, all those pills and all those drugs. Well, hate to say it. Maybe you shouldn't have put your bodies through that shit. That avoidable shit. So, yeah. Anyway, I decided to watch some of uh, <coughs> Stand Deliver. Do not worry. I will have thoughts on that show. Becky G does America the Beautiful. She sings as well as she acts and acts as well as she sings. I forgot she was in the Power Rangers 2017 movie. And then Kevin Hart does the opening narration. Apparently, they're letting children from Make-A-Wish do openings. Ah, ha, 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 ha. That's unfair. The children have a chance to get taller than Kevin Hart. I don't find Kevin Hart funny. I have not found Kevin Hart funny for a while. The stage looks great. They had the door entrance and all the big, <coughs> the big steps and all that. It was WrestleMania going Hollywood. Great grand scope. Snoop and Mike Mizzlezanon, aha, man, I'm so goddamn white trying to talk like this, Inglewood, California, it's not like uh, Snoop ever mentioned Inglewood or Dr. Dre ever mentioned Inglewood, and how high was Snoop? Yes, yes is the answer. Uh, Theory makes his entrance, and then we go to a Make-A-Wish plug, because philanthropy is the future of marketing, it's the way brands are going to win, it means something to the children, and wrestlers do actually like to make the kids happy. Cena especially, and others have done Make-A-Wish stuff. It means a lot to the kids. But you know what? When Stephanie put that tweet out, basically she said, all this, uh, you know, all, all this charity, it's just to, you know, help uh, hide the fact that we're, you know, really, really evil people running this, the McMahons especially. And there you go. So Cena sees all these Make-A-Wish kids. Oh, look, we're going to go out there and I'm going to beat, I'm going to beat Austin Theory, kids. Yay! <laughs> Guess what he didn't do? Cena against Theory for the U.S. Championship. I couldn't help but focus on Cena's bald spot. I'm sorry. It was just so noticeable. When he did the STF, I'm like, good God, you could shine a spotlight and blind half the stadium. <sighs> this didn't click. I'm sorry. Yes, Theory had to win. I, I didn't have a problem with Theory winning. In fact, Theory winning was the only way that they had to go. But the sleeper, forever, the ref bump, the STF, the Cena still can't do right. And then a low blow, an A-Town down, one, two, three. Theory was no more over coming into this than he is coming out of it. Those who really like Theory, you're going to like him just as much. If you're like me and I know I am, you're not going to give a shit. And... <clears throat> Then, speaking of not giving a shit, uh, the next match. The Raiders with Valhalla. You know, I bet Sarah Rowe probably thought that the LAPD had the right idea and were in the right on March 3rd, 1991. Ho-ho, this is going well, the racist bitch. Hope her child grows up to be smarter than she is and leaves her in the dust. But nevertheless, it's the Raiders with Valhalla. The Prophets, Team Why You Bald, Ricochet, and the Brawny Paper Strongman. And Gable and Otis, a.k.a. Gable. Oh, look, Gable. Gable's going to take the pin. <laughs> Big shock. Big shock that, um... <laughs> Actually, I don't... I don't remember. Well, Gable usually always takes the pin, so I just routinely say that. Look, it was a mania... It was a men's mania showcase. There were some cool moves, some popping moves. It was... It, it got it popping, as the kids said. I believe the kids said that about 20 years ago. And... Chad did a German to Braun. Braun did a splash. 
There was some. There was a Tower of Doom spot that was so goddamn convoluted, proving that recent Bret Hart quote was right, where people just cluster <laughs> and just do all that stuff and all the leg slaps and everything. But nevertheless, so yeah, roll up one, two, three, or a roll up variation, and the profits win. There we are. There were moments that were kind of cool, but it was just series moves that didn't mean anything because the tag team divisions in general are messes, even with some of the talents. So, not a package on Edward James Omos, and then Xavier Lib, Tyler Breeze, who's not working with the company, but as part of Up, Up, Down, Down, is there, along with Peter Dune, Ridge, and some other guy. Okay, and then the next match, Logan Paul makes his entrance on a zip line. I was really hoping they use the same zip line company, or, or the same cable company, that they use when they try to lower Owen Hart in the Kemper Arena at Over the Edge 99. Can we trade Logan Paul for Owen Hart? Owen Hart actually was beneficial to wrestling. Owen Hart at least seemed like a good guy. Logan Paul has taken to this like a fish to water. He has taken to this like very few other celebrities. I'm not saying he's not taking it seriously. He's a piece of shit. He deserves every bit of scorn he got. Any injuries he suffers, I hope they're magnified. But there you go. And, whoa, whoa, we get a choir seemingly from the heavens singing. <laughs> Why was Seth dressed like the Red Queen from Alice in Wonderland? Seth Pheasant Rollins against Logan Paul. Okay, there was also a Prime bottle, uh, you know, somebody in a Prime bottle costume. I said it was going to be Jake Paul. Fortunately, it wasn't Jake Paul. Unfortunately, it was somebody else. Okay. There were good moves in this. I'm sorry, this went, this went about five minutes longer than it needed to. There was too much comedy in this. And... Yes, it did get Seth in a prominent position, and again, Logan was willing to take this seriously until they got to the stupid comedy. So, Cole, Michael Cole, when Logan Paul did like a, a, a you know, on the ground octopus variation, he said he compared Logan Paul to Antonio Inoki. If Michael Cole ever does that again, I want his entire family and series of loved ones held over a pit until he apologizes for being a terrible commentator. Michael Cole, you are a terrible commentator. How dare you? How dare you? Antonio Inoki should have rose from the ground and smashed you with his chin. Anyway, a moonsault, and then Logan went splat. Great moonsault. He got height on it. And then we got three dives, <laughs> and then the hand into the steps, because Logan's got, like, some screws in his hand because he broke it. Too bad, too bad it wasn't other parts of his body that got broken. But we got near falls, a KO punch, and then, a, you know, a delayed cover, one, two. And then suddenly, the person behind the prime bottle gets revealed. Who is K KSI? Who is KSI? All I know is he looks like a goddamn idiot, and if he's associated with Logan Paul, that means he's an idiot. Apparently, he, somebody told me he's his business partner. Well, he looks like a goddamn doofus, and I was really hoping that co costume wasn't that absorbent, because I really, really, honest to God, hope that he wasn't able to get back up under his own power. If you're associated with Logan Paul, you're a goddamn idiot. <laughs> this went forever. This really felt like it went forever. We got a stomp, one, two, three. Yes, the right winner, Seth Pheasant Rollins won. Is he really a ton more over than he was? With Logan doing all stupid antics that might have popped the young people. And if you like this, that's fine. There were moments I didn't mind. But no, fuck Logan Paul. Filmed in the that Japanese suicide force, did all that other shit and everything. He deserves every bit of ridicule he gets. And KSI, how dare you? How dare you exist on this planet, whoever you are, whatever you are. Anyway... And Bailey apparently was dressed as Buzz Lightyear. Well, actually, people point out that she was dressed like Sasha, well, now Mercedes Monet. Okay, cool. I mean, they're best friends. That makes sense. <laughs> so we get a black and white type intro with rain and everything. Rain on the inside for Trish and Lita. Now, I know that Trish and Lita are old, but they're not black and white TV old. Zoe Stark that was actually watching just after she went in the ladder match as to and deliver where man she must have been nervous because she was there when the first ladder was actually made and it had to be the first one to climb that and was really really confused so being that old and being in a ladder match and then seeing black and white tv thinking this is reminding me too much of my youth even though her youth was around before the black plague actually happened but nevertheless 
It's Becky and the Elders, Lita and Trish, against Damage Control, Bailey, Dakota, and Io. It, I bet it was a thrill for everybody to work with their idols. I bet it was. God, this is brutal. I mean, Trish still looked good. Trish got her spots in. Lita, I know that everybody ages, and you can't do everything that you used to do, and Lita's had neck injuries, and she's had that, and she's been off for a while, and I get that. Good God, that was rough. It was, Jesus. That was really, really rough watching Lita try to... I, I, I basically did say I need you to choke me like David Carradine was choked and scream at me in Japanese. I may have issues. Eo moonsaults everyone. This got messy is what I wrote down. I mean, it was a thrill for everybody to work with their idols, and, you know, the younger talents, and that's good. I get why they did this match, but God, it was not good. And then we get uh, Manhandle Slam on Bailey. One, two, three. Okay. You couldn't have pinned Dakota? I mean, I'm not even knocking Dakota, but you couldn't have pinned her? Because Bailey, yeah, maybe Teflon, you could do that. They're probably going to break up damage control. I don't know. <clears throat> and then we get a package on Ray and Dominic. And then they do this long thing. <clears throat> well, first we have Bad Bunny on Spanish commentary. And kind of makes sense. They're going to Puerto Rico for backlash on May 6th, I believe. And there we are. Makes sense why Bad Bunny would be out there. Bad Bunny made me eat crow for what he did at the um, you know, at Mania 37 and also what he did at the Royal Rumble last year. Even though the Royal Rumble last year was shit, at least he took it seriously. <laughs> and he respects it, and I can't fault him for that. So they did an Alcatraz-type thing for Dominic where he's being led out by, you know, he's being freed from prison or doing all this. He's in the paddy wagon being taken out. And he comes out in handcuffs and the Lucha outfit and the old Rey Mysterio mask from Halloween Havoc 97. They went all in on this. They went all in on this. I will give them credit for that. I will absolutely give them credit for that. And then Ray comes out in a Snoop... A Snoop Lowrider that had to make custom made. If that thing was not at least 90k cost, I mean, I don't know what would be. They had nothing but a G thing, baby. Death Row is a label that made me. Can't sound more white if I tried. Eddie's theme, Ray's theme, big old deal. Ray went up those steps. God, he must have been so tired. Because I mean, I don't care if he was even 25. Those steps, that those are steep. So here we go. Ray versus Dominic, Father versus Son, Blood Feud, sponsored by Cinnamon Toast Crunch, so let's get all the colors around and everything. Me thinks that this was supposed to be the Bray Wyatt spot, but it's this Blood Feud and all the Cinnamon Toast Crunch stuff just took away from it. I mean, I'm sorry, but it did. Okay. I bet you're all waiting for me to knock the whole thing, <laughs> knock this whole thing and knock Dominic, knock Ray and all this. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to say this match was great. Am I going to say this match exceeded my expectations? Well, yes, but I had no expectations. Was it better than I thought it would be? Sure. Was it great? No. Was it bad? No. Am I sold on Dominic? No. But they definitely did the best to dress this up. Again, the Cinnamon Toast Crunch thing was too distracting. Um, and then at one point, Dominic threw, threw a drink on Aaliyah. A brother getting his sister wet. Are we in goddamn Utah or the Dirty South? You freaking goddamn incestuous hillbillies. What the hell's wrong with you? Are you incestuous Mormons? What the fuck's wrong with you? Boy, if any Mormons are watching this, you're all going to wonder what's wrong with me. But yeah, Dominic was just doing this and <clears throat> knocking his family. And then, and then he was slapped by his grand... Oh, wait, no. I'm sorry. He wasn't slapped by his great-grandma. That was his mother. I'm sorry. She just That's mean. Poor Angie. She didn't deserve that. And then they're they're doing some stuff. At one point, before that, Ray even spanked Dominic in the corner. And we did all this other stuff. And later, Finn and Damien showed up. And then we get a bad corner bump for Ray. That looked really, really brutal. It's not the only bad corner bump we got. So we got distractions. And then Legoland Phantasm, the new LWO, comes out. And then a 619 to Ray. Oh no, Dominic's going to get the victory. Frog splash for two. An exposed buckle. But the referee's distracted just so Damien, who had brought out a windbreaker, 
Dominic's got a chain. He's going to hit him. <clears throat> Bad Bunny rips the chain out and says, no. Rips the chain out. It's like the chain was part of him. Ouch, that would hurt. 619, splash, 1, 2, 3, big pop, so father beats son. Okay. I mean, I'm still, I was still don't think that the match was great. I still don't think that the build was all that great. But am I going to say I was pleasantly surprised? Eh, maybe. I'm not going to dump on this match like I could have. I mean, <clears throat> there are things that I will probably dump on on night two. And definitely some things I'm going to dump on with Stan Deliver. Just FYI for that. Okay. Backlash is going to, again, be in Puerto Rico on May 6, 2023. <clears throat> And hopefully it goes better than the wrestling event that Carlos Colon put on when he had Bruiser Brody and Jose Gonzalez meet in the shower on July 16th, 1988. Let's just say, so, you know, uh, Carlos Colon took a stab at getting heat. So let's move on from that. <laughs> let's go over to Germany. Oh, that's a very depressing sentence. I'm sorry. Germany is a really, really cool place. At least so I've heard. But yeah, they were showing different reactions in the UK and Germany and Australia and all that. Charlotte got some pyro. <laughs> Whoever did Charlotte's makeup hated her because it did her no favors, especially with that lighting. It, it really didn't. Charlotte versus Rhea, SmackDown Women's Championship. And referee Jess, it was announcer Samantha Irvin. So, big deal. All, all women. Good. Would have been kind of cool if they did all women commentators or whatever, but, you know, we had to endure Cole and Corey on this. <clears throat> I do want to say, by the way, Corey was just egregiously offensive on some of these matches. I mean, he wasn't here, but he was on, in other matches. It seemed like Rhea just dyed her hair moments before she came out to do this because it was running down her like she was Rudy Giuliani, except Rhea actually is a positive influence on the... On the world, unlike Rudy Giuliani or anybody who thinks like Rudy Giuliani, Rudy Giuliani, that is. And if you think like him, you're a fucking idiot. And if you agree with him, you're a fucking idiot. That being said, this match not gonna encapsulate every single goddamn move on this, but it was 23 to 24 minutes of great. <laughs> and I'm not the biggest Charlotte fan. When she shows up, though, she shows up, she shows off, and Rhea was there for everything. Rhea has stepped her game up in the last number of years, continuing to rise up and rise up and rise up. That spike DDT was really rough. That buckle shot that Charlotte took, the double boot spot, and then a released German off the top. I thought Charlotte landed on her head. And then she landed on her head a little bit later. <laughs> Dear God. A step spot, moonsault outside, a riptide for two. Shit, I thought Charlotte's going to win. One, two, one, two, one, two. Boo, yay, boo, yay, boo, yay. And then a spear for two. Charlotte was bleeding by this point. Um, a post spot. We're getting, we're, they're cooking. They're doing great. This crowd is up. They're electric. And then super riptide. One, two, three. Big pop, new SmackDown Women's Champion, one of the best matches of the year, one of the best matches WWE has put on in quite a while. This might be the best WWE match of the year. Might be. Might be. Now, people can argue in the comments if you want. That's just my opinion. Note, I said WWE match. But this may be up there by the end of the year, <clears throat> as far as all matches, at least stuff I reviewed. So, there you go. Big deal. Rhea got big pyro. Good stuff. And then Byron interviews Theory. Do you believe in Theory now? No, I fucking don't, you fucking idiot. So then <clears throat> Snoopy Miz announced the attendance. 80,497 fans. <laughs> Bullshit. 70,000, I'm guessing. Now, I'm not saying that stadium wasn't really full, but come on. <clears throat> um, so Snoop says, hey, Miz, you should have a match. And here's Pat McAfee. Cole just acts all surprised. Apparently, they just keep surprising Cole by saying, hey, don't worry. No, Pat's not here. That's not Pat. Don't worry about it. And then he comes out, no, my God, it's my best friend, the guy that basically saved my commentary job because I'm really bad at what I do. Pat McAfee, uh, Corey did call him Aaron Rodgers' po propaganda machine. Corey, not wrong for once. Aaron Rodgers is an asshole and an idiot and deserves every bit of CT. He deserves to end up a drooling vegetable, losing his millions. Moving on, Cole, <laughs> he's thrilled. And it's made. Pat versus Miz. Corey was insufferable here. 
George Kittle, I believe, of the 49ers. <clears throat> 49ers are... For, I'm trying to remember, actually. I'm genuinely trying to remember. But anyway, he shows up. <coughs> from Well, he shows up from the crowd, rather. Comes out while the referee's distracted. Throws, um... <clears throat> throws... Uh, Miz around a little bit. And then Pat hits the punt. One, two, three. Big moment. That's cool. <clears throat> and it makes us miss Pat by not having him there every single week. Though I hate to say it, Pat may need to be back at some point because we need at least something refreshed because Booker does not need to be on commentary in NXT anymore. Put Wade down there. Put Pat in NXT if you really want. Pat and Vic Joseph, sign me up. At least you can understand, Pat. You can't understand Booker. That being said, good. So, and who is Lil Uzi Vert? fuck comes up with these names? The you know, West Texas Rednecks were right. Anyway, so we get a video package on the tag, on the tag team main event. The Usos come out. Owens comes out. Zane comes out. Big pop. Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens against the Usos. Undisputed tag team championship match. I'm not going to encapsulate every move here. It's all about storytelling. The Usos wanted to beat down Sami. Owens kept fighting back, and then Owens would get laid out. He got laid out you know, through the announcer's table at one point after making a big comeback. <laughs> the Usos continued to target Zayn with super kicks. That is one thing that modern wrestling needs more of. More goddamn super kicks. That's one thing that Shawn Michaels probably should have, uh, you know, probably should share the burden of is, is you know, popularizing the super kick. He invented. Chris Adams was a guy who did it before Shawn Michaels, but still. I mean, at least the Usos do it better than the Bucks because the Usos are actually wrestlers, unlike the Bucks. But enough AEW, WWE stuff on WrestleMania. The 1D for 2. Oh my god, nobody's kicked out of the 1D. Stunner for 2 and then a standoff. And oh my god, they're just going at it. And near falls and greatness. And then I, the weird twisting brain buster move that friggin' Owens does. Where it looks like he kills himself just as much as he kills his opponent. And then it seems like, oh my God, you know, maybe they're going to do it. They're going to do it. And it looks like the Usos might actually be able to just pull it out. And then Haluva kick, Haluva kick, Haluva kick, where Zane really held up on that. And like, okay, you wanted this, the third one. One, two, three, big pop, new tag team champions, big roar, big pyro. There you go. Sent the crowd home happy for night one. We'll see what happens on night two. Boy, Night 2 is going to have to come out rocking and rolling after the end of Night 1. <clears throat> now, I don't know how they're going to start Night 2. I'll be here for all of it, though. So let me know your thoughts on Night 1 in the comments, please. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ripplin. I'll see you soon.